Actually, if uh, Thomas, the helicopter driver, could, pilot could get a little closer, we could actually read that clock. But there we are. We're on board with Robert Kubica. Don't even try to pronounce his uh, co-driver's name. Just call him Maciek. He told me, you'll never guess and you'll never know how to pronounce my name. But here we are. We're stage 20, about to get underway. And Robert's mission today, I would guess, in car number 10, is simply to get to the end of this stage, survive the ice that awaits him down here at the end on the ski slope and then to move on repeat the loop see what he can make of the power stage that will bring you live this afternoon and then finish the first event the revs are on they're about to drop and robert kubita is underway on stage 20. yeah robert's had uh, a difficult weekend one thing he has learned is how to use a shovel that is for sure but uh, running just a little bit wide in the first proper corner as well. Tyres will be slightly colder as well now, so he's going to have to just get himself sorted a little bit. Well, I would say the tyres and Robert. You can see the car moving around all over the place. Just a small, like, darkish colour to the road, not completely snow-covered. Robert changing a pace note there. Robert Kubica from 21st position. He's dropped 20 minutes so far over the weekend, and the stage you won't want to see again was stage 12 on Friday. He's already changed a couple of notes, but as Robert says, every day, every stage is a new challenge for him. And it's quite funny when you talk to him, everything seems to be the biggest challenge he's ever done in his life. And uh, it's, it's great to have him in rallying, that is for sure. This probably has to be the most difficult thing I think he's ever done, I, I would say. But uh, it's uh, very, very challenging on these, on these conditions. But he's a brave guy and courageous, and he's up for the challenge. This stage, 15.87 kilometers long this year, so we're expecting them to be finishing in about eight, eight and a half minutes. That's the, that's the theory. Oh, no, he's off! Bang. Ow, ow, ow. Our helicopter he, oh, pilot. God, he was right. He was on his side as well. He's been virtually over completely. He's blocking the road. They're going to have to really slow down the following car. Michael Solover, the co-driver, Matic, is going to have to go down the road to slow him down because he's just in the road. They can get past, but Robert was onto his side. He smashed the windscreen on that tree. There's some spectators there. Some of them need to go up the road and slow them down. And the second car onto the stage has started because we're two minutes 35 into the event. But this is Robert's latest He's undoing. Just drifted wide. You can just see it. He starts to go wide there. He's into the snow. He was actually on his side and then into the front. Ah, he, he should get out. He should get out. And I'm not sure, though, if he's going to have done any suspension damage. We'll only know that when it comes out. Here is Robert's view of this incident on stage 20, and, well, the... just off the line, as we were saying, just off the line, and then into the trees. Now, coming up close behind, this is the live picture from Kubica's uh, car. What, only a matter of uh, kilometres out there. Suspension Macek looks okay on this out. side. Well, Maciek's out, Robert's going to stay in. He needs to be turning the wheel and putting the throttle in. And that, this news should have reached Mikhail Solovov, also of Poland, who will be behind him on the stage. Well, the team suspect, because they're both with M Sport, the team hopefully would have sent a message to Solovov to say that Robert is off the road. But th there should be some spectators. There they are. They'll be slowing the next car down. But uh, Robert's had a tough weekend. This is the third time in the snow. OK, there's Solovov going past the yet. They can get past that sort of problem. There's more people. Maciek is up the road now, trying to just slow anyone down, getting more spectators and marshals there to try and get out. That's two minutes gone already in that ditch. To be fair, position-wise, it makes no difference. We're 
back now running with Robert Kubica. That's his clock on this stage. I imagine any minute now he's going to appear. That's it, through the trees, past the marshals. They've got a windscreen in the rear end. It's, it is looking very second-hand. The boys at M Sport, yeah. Mr Wilson, you need a windscreen, a rear spoiler, a bonnet and everything for the service. Robert struggling through here to the finish. Here he comes down the ski slope. This is on the way to the end of the stage. This was going to be the final challenge of stage 20, but I think it's this whole entire stage for Robert Kubica has been a challenge. Well, we imagined that they would be coming to the end of this at about... Eight minutes, 8.30, 8 minutes 30, and uh, Robert looks as if he's added another five minutes to the 20 or so minutes that he's dropped throughout this event as he comes through the final couple of corners to record a time. Well, he's dropped three minutes 36. It's not as bad as the doom scenario that I portrayed. And there he comes into the stop control. You have to do a lot of mileage with a windscreen like that. Robert, a disaster in there. Tell us what happened, please. Uh, there was a long corner, and I pick up quite a lot of understeer, and it get tightens, and uh, yeah, the, uh, the pace was wrong, and uh, I pick up understeer, and we went into the ditch. Okay, and is the car okay? Yeah, yeah it's just windscreen we have to replace, and we'll be okay. okay. Okay, thank you, Julian. If I may. Okay, I did comment and it changed two pace notes before he went off there, and it just did slip out of the line. So, uh, yeah, he just obviously, it's his first time making pace notes here, and he just ran wide and understeered off and then into the trees. I'm pleased he's got it going again, and there's yeah. no suspension. Yeah, windscreen can.